Hey folks, welcome back. So as part of my effort to expand my Twisty Puzzle collection, recently I've been scouring eBay and just keeping my eye out on a few classic puzzles that I was really interested in that offer something a little bit different. Um, it's been always been curious to me how certain classes of Twisty Puzzles that sort of arrived during the wave of interest in the Rubik's Cube during the 80s never really spawned the same level of interest in variants and mods and high-order versions that we see in the Enbine cubes and Pyraminxes and Megaminxes and so on. So I'd like to track down more of these classics that didn't really get their due and kind of see how I feel about them. Um, and also it's nice to just have a piece of twisty puzzling history, I suppose. Um, so what you see in front of you is one of these. So this is the 10 billion barrel. This was created by Nintendo, I believe by Gunpei Yokoi who is also known for creating a lot of other important stuff, like the Game Boy, for example. Um, and this is a puzzle that uh, you can actually still obtain today for quite cheaply. So I got this from eBay for £10, uh, which really is not very much money at all. This is an original run from 1980. So actually, if we zoom in here a little bit, uh, you should be able to see... So it says patent pending, made in Japan. And then if we go around this way... We have a 1980 copyright symbol by Nintendo. I'm not sure if there's anything else on the bottom, just the same stuff. Um, so this is a twisty puzzle, but it also has plungers. Um, and that's what really makes this puzzle stand out, uh, along with the fact that it's sort of legendarily difficult. Um, so I'm looking forward to working out how to solve this. But it's a very unique and interesting looking puzzle right from the get-go. Um, I'm quite happy with the condition this one is in. I'll just sort of rotate it around so you can see. There's a little bit of, you know, cloudiness in some of the plastic. There's some scratches on the surface here and there. Um, but, you know, it doesn't affect the visibility of the beads inside, which is what we're trying to solve. Um, and the movement of the puzzle seems absolutely fine, uh, as well as the plunger. So given that this puzzle is actually older than me, um, you know, that's pretty impressive, I think. Uh, so the way this puzzle works... It came to me scrambled, and I, I've only so far managed to figure out how to solve uh, these four orange pieces. <laughs> um, and they will quickly get destroyed anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. But um, So, as you could kind of tell from my movements a second ago, we have these middle layers here, which can be twisted around the puzzle. And they sort of slap quite loudly and satisfyingly into place. Uh, and either of these two layers can be turned like so. Then we have these plungers. Now the plungers are what allow us to shift beads between their positions in different layers, right? If we only had these two layers, then then the beads would never go up or down or, or do anything uh, vertically. But with the plungers, that's how we then shift where where beads are going to be. So if I have the plunger down, you know, I could uh, and I want to move this yellow, I could bump it up to the top, um, and then you know shift these two to put it on top of these layers or or what have you, and then. Uh, move that out to then manipulate the orange or the red down there, whatever I want to do. So you need these two methods together to manipulate the puzzle. And that's really where the challenge level comes from, because uh, if you look at the way these layers actually work, um, each one, so we have five columns on the puzzle, right, if we go around, um, and each column contains two beads in each layer, uh, except for... So we have three columns that have these plungers in, where we can move the beads up and down. Now, in those uh, slots, we actually have room for five beads. So when the puzzle is just sat in this position, um, we will have three columns with five beads each, and then we have these two columns here with eight beads. So that gives us 23 beads in total of five different colors. Um, and of course, the goal is to scramble up the beads as they are currently, and then bring them all back together in same colored columns. Sounds easy enough, right? However, uh, where things go a bit awry is that uh, each layer moves at a minimum 10 beads at once, okay? Um, so there's no immediately obvious way to easily manipulate small numbers of beads without affecting a whole big chunk of the puzzle at the same time. Now, I have no doubt at all that there are lots of handy algorithms I can discover that will allow me to move pairs of beads around or even one bead at a time. I have not yet discovered those, <laughs> so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but to me, this is kind of a weird 
plungerified twisty puzzle uh, with a deep cut. So, you know, we're, we're affecting almost half of the puzzle anytime we make a turn. And when we move the plunger, we're actually shifting 15 beads, which is more than half the puzzle. Um, so as is the case with, with normal uh, polyhedral twisty puzzles, when you have cuts that affect a ton of pieces at once, uh, that leads to much higher levels of difficulty generally. So, um, And this puzzle is, is well known for being tough. I'm not sure, um, I'm sure, well, I know for a fact, actually, that there's a solution available on uh, Jop's puzzle page. Um, it looked quite long and complicated. I did not read it because I would like to struggle through this for myself, at least for a while. If I get really super stuck and frustrated, then uh, rather than throw this in a drawer to never be touched again, I will uh, have a look at that solution. But I don't know, I, I, I feel like intuitively, you know, fairly quickly, I could start thinking about how to bring beads together. Um, and I do get the sense that if I sort of cleverly combine relatively confined movements with these plungers, I should be able to kind of swap pieces around Yeah, like, so just by doing that cycle there, you know, I could see that, that beads were kind of going in a, in a circle like that, although they also interfered slightly in this direction, but it didn't actually disrupt my orange layer. So that's quite promising. Um, but if I bring this over here, then can I still preserve... Oh, this is, this is difficult. See, already I'm, I'm running into a problem because... I don't think I can salvage this yellow bead on top of here without screwing up these orange ones. So yeah, this is going to be tough. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like with some experimentation uh, and just because it's scrambled, unfortunately, uh, and I'm not good at keeping track of such things, I will probably bust my notebook out and, and just make note of which colors are in what position and just experiment with different combos of twisty moves and plunger moves and see if I can come up with any three cycles or, or other useful cycles of, of beads around the puzzle. Um, and then I'll see if I can constru construct a solve. Uh, I kind of feel like I, I will eventually. Um, I don't feel like it's going to give me as much trouble as the Astrolabicus variants have done from Oscar, which are the most amazing puzzles. And I love everything about them, but they are so hard. <laughs> this is going to be hard, but I think it's not going to be impossible for me to figure out on my own. Uh, so I will try that, and uh, if I have some success, I will come back and report on that and uh, show off an example solve. But really, um, it's a pretty cool thing, you know, and I love the fact that it's made by Nintendo and it looks like a barrel because that reminds me of Donkey Kong, and I'm sure that's intentional as well. Um, it's a really solid-feeling puzzle. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. You know, I love these kind of moving bead puzzles that combine elements of twistiness, and this definitely has that. Um, and also, it's it's highly affordable, so really nothing to complain about. I should say as well, there is a modern uh, knockoff of the 10 billion barrel, which has been made by a Spanish company. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, it has loco in it. Uh, I'll put a link in the description anyway, but um, if you want to get a newly made one of these, you can actually buy them uh, quite easily. Uh, they are in stock at Puzzle Master in Canada, and I'm actually planning to buy probably uh, one or two of those as well, because I'd like to experiment with mods for these. Um, I wonder if it's going to be any harder if I, for example, took two of them, lengthened the plungers, and made a four-layer 10 billion barrel. I'm not sure if that would actually be harder, or if it would just be roughly the same. Maybe there'd be some interesting things to do with uh, restricting, restricting the movement of the layers, or having certain layers do stuff that other layers can't do. I don't know. I feel like there's a world of possibilities. And that's what really attracted me to this puzzle, besides the moving bead plus twisting element, is just that sense that, you know, this is a quite famous puzzle, quite famously hard as well. But there's really not much out there as far as people building modifications or puzzles inspired by the 10 billion barrel. And I'm not sure, you know, maybe because it, it just hit at a time when you know, the polyhedral style twisty puzzle was was king of the hill, and this kind of was was something a bit out there for people. I don't I don't know. Maybe it was harder to obtain. Maybe Nintendo didn't promote it that much in the West. I, I really don't know much about the situation, but uh, to me, this is a pretty cool thing, and uh, I'd really like to see more puzzles like this. And in general, you know, the idea of having a, a twisty puzzle with plunger elements uh, is also pretty rare.
So I think we really need to credit Nintendo for uh, a lot of innovation with this puzzle. Um, and it, it's, it is really satisfying to turn. It kind of snaps into place. So if I, if I get it sort of mostly turned, you can see it just easily sort of tucks into where it's supposed to go. Um, and it, it feels almost like a magnetized speed cube, which is a weird thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope that you all could see pretty well. Um, one thing that's a bit problematic with this puzzle is that the, uh, you know, this transparent plastic is very glossy and my lighting is not so good. So I apologize if occasionally it's hard to see what's going on. Uh, it's hard for me to tell through the viewfinder what's happening. But anyway, this is the 10 billion barrel from Nintendo from 1980. Um, definitely check out your friendly local eBay sellers and uh, get yourself one. I think it's a great classic to have in the collection. Um, and I'd love to hear about interesting solutions that other people develop. If you've tried modding this or anything like that, um, I'd be really interested to see what people come up with. Uh, it's just, it just, you know, when you hold it in your hand and look at how it actually works, uh, it just feels like a really, really cool puzzle and, and very robust and, and well-made. Um, you know, it, it's clearly been played with over the last 40 years, uh, but it's in really really tip-top shape, and uh, I think it's easily got another 40 years left in it. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I will be doing some other videos about classics uh, in the puzzle collection as I pick them up, and uh, I'll be trying to develop my own solutions for these and showcasing them when I do. Um, so there won't be so many videos in this sort of collection because I haven't expanded that far into classic puzzle collecting as of yet. Um, and there's only a few older puzzles that I feel, you know, we don't have modern equivalents for or modern re-implementations of that I really need to track down. But there are a few. So I am aiming to pick those up. And when I do, of course, I will tell you all about them. So let me know what you think in the comments of the 10 billion barrel. If you got any hot tips on uh, interesting solving strategies or if you, you know, have... Uh, heard something about interesting mods made to the puzzle or things that I could do with the extra ones that I will buy from Puzzle Master, then please let me know in the comments. And until then, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.